This is the Blind Grilling Experience, and I am the most interesting griller in the world. Welcome to the Blind Grilling Experience. My name is Chris Peltz, and I am the most interesting griller in the world. And today we've got a special guest lined up for you, and I am so excited to have Mr. Chad from Kick Ash Basket joining us today. Chad, how you doing? I'm fantastic, Chris. And you? Yeah, man. Doing doing well, as, as good as can be, especially... Uh, right now but um i guess if i was any any better i'd have to be twins man <laughs> so <laughs> doing all my right. grandfather used to say man i'm so good i can hardly stand myself that's right <laughs> <laughs> that's about how it goes man that's uh which hey you know that's uh well there's a lot of stuff to complain about but um uh you know as far as my life itself um you know that it, it's uh it 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 wouldn't be worth it. Um, too many good things that overcome all yeah. the bad. So, um, yeah. but, uh, but man, it, it's, I've been looking forward to having you on and, uh, talking about the, the company, seeing how things were going for you guys. And, um, it just, yeah. you know, you guys have been such an integral part since we got started as, as far as blind grilling and the, and the nonprofit side of things is concerned you guys were on board right away and helping us and provide product for our packages and uh, you i from what i can understand and, and you can get into this a, a little bit but you you got started making these charcoal baskets for the egg itself right correct yep so yep that's the so how, well, how that happened let me let, yeah. me let me qualify that yes and okay. no so the very first grill I had was actually a grill dome, which is very similar in size to the big green egg. Now, when we started making baskets, um, after I dis discovered that there was a need, um, we discovered that, you know, big green egg was really the number one brand out there. And if I'm going to make something to go to market with, that was going to be for the large big green egg. Mm -hmm. And uh, that that basket that I had made originally back in 2010 um, for the grill dome was a little bit too big for the big green egg. Um, but when I I made one to fit the egg, it also fit the grill dome. So that's kind of, that's kind of how we started. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that's a couple of years ago. Holy smokes! Yeah, Two right. Years. Yeah. <laughs> when I made the time flies, game. man. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And so, I mean, what, what was your thought process in this? I mean, you've got an engineering background anyway, right? So you, you yeah. was, what, what was your, what were you thinking? I mean, when you, I mean, was it just that when, you know, putting it in the egg, I mean, what was your, your thought as far as, you know, holding that charcoal, what was your main purpose? Yeah. So yeah, you know, my background is in, in mechanical engineering, but I, I grew up in a little town in, in Michigan, um, the thumb of Michigan, for you folks that are, are familiar with the state shape. Um, we're about two hours north of Detroit, out in the middle of flatland, farmland, Michigan. And, and um, you know, my dad and I, my dad actually sold life insurance when I was growing up, but we always were playing in the shop, playing in the barn you know, fixing things, fixing lawnmowers and stuff like that. So that's kind of how I was raised and, and always, you know, trying to make things better. And so when I got my grill in 2010, um, about, I think it was only about a month in, um, I was trying to cook a pizza. And um, you guys have Papa Murphy's Take and Bake Pizza oh, yeah. down there? Yeah, sure do. Yeah, so you're familiar with Love at 425. That's right. <laughs> that's what they say. <laughs> that's right. Well, that's what I was trying to cook, yeah. and I couldn't get my grill above 300 degrees. And so I, I called my buddy at the shop uh, where I got the grill, Chip, and um, said, Hey, Chip, what's going on? Why can't I get this grill at the temperature? And he asked how well I cleaned out the charcoal, and I said, Well, I stirred it with that silly stick you sold me. <laughs> that's right. And um, he's like, Man, you, you really got to get it cleaned out. And 
that was the aha moment of, you know, actually my wife, Tracy and I both were like, gosh, if you just had a bucket or a basket that you could simply, you know, like sift that, yeah. the sand out of the rocks or shake the ash out of the charcoal, well, life would be a lot easier. And yeah, so, so that's kind of where it started. And I figured somebody had to be making one. And in, in 2010, I went looking all over the internet and couldn't find anything to buy. I'd seen a couple guys had had made something, you know, out of old salad bowls or something. They drilled a bunch of holes in them and stuff. And I'm like, well, I can figure something out. So yeah. So the first one I made was out of uh, expanded metal, and um, my dad helped me weld it. Um, back in our chicken coop, I think was where we made the first one. Oh, right wow. Back in Michigan. We welded it up in the old chicken coop that dad turned into a shop. Yeah. And uh, that was awesome. We had, I had coat hangers for handles, and it, was, well, it wasn't it was good welding. I mean, it was ugly, but <laughs> darn thing <it> worked. Yeah, <laughs> right, right. right. Yeah. Wow. So, so that's what, yeah, that's kind of where it started. And, and um, then I had buddies getting eggs and, you know, other ceramic grills and like, hey, will you make me one of those things? And. I probably made eight or 10 of them for friends and, and then, and it took a while. It's probably tr- by um, like 2013 then when we decided to, you know, try to find a manufacturer and see if we could do something with it. And yeah, then the fun began. So, right. There wow. you go. <laughs> yeah, man. But I mean, that's just neat. Just, to, just hearing that, you know, the development of that and just kind of, you know, how you, you, the mind working, working through that. I mean, that's what, that's what America is about anyway, you know, is that, that process and that, that ability and willingness to, to do that. And then, and then making it happen. I mean, that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, um, thank you. And, and you didn't stop I love sharing, sharing our story with folks, Chris. So I just want to say thanks for yeah. having us on the show and, you know, if we can inspire more people to get out and grill and cook for their family. That's one thing. But if, if you can, if we can inspire them to, to, you know, do something like this, something mm-hmm. simple and, and be able to provide for your families. That is, that is the American way. Absolutely. Yeah. So thank you. Yeah. yeah. No, I mean, <laughs> you know, and it's, and it's one of those things that this, it, it seems so simple. And, and I saw when I was first looking into this and, and finding out about the, the KAB, um, you know, there were a lot of, uh, I don't want to say haters necessarily, but you know, guys that were just like, Oh, you know, you can just do this or do that, you know, buy a flower pot hanger, you know, at Lowe's and, and throw in there. And, and they were, that, that wasn't going to last, you know, and they, you just have to keep well, Chris, I'll tell you my favorite, my favorite guy out of the gates when we, when we first, you know, launched our website and stuff, he's like, man, that's the silliest darn thing ever. I just pull out big chunks of charcoal and I put them in this bucket and I pull, put the medium chunks of charcoal in this bucket and the little chunks in that bucket. And then I scrape out the bottom with my hands and it's all good. And I'm like, man, you are not my guy. Yeah, I've got hungry kids I got to cook for and I'm working full time. I'm not retired and living in Florida. <laughs> so, yeah, right. <laughs> there were all kinds of folks, you know, yeah. and stuff. Yeah. You just got to keep on going. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. That's right. And, and you did because you went well beyond, first of all, with just with the basket itself, you went well beyond the egg. You haven't stopped because it almost seems as though, you know, every few months I'm checking out the website and, and which I check it out more often than that. But, at least, you know, it's like there's always a new basket, a new grill, you know, that you guys have created a basket for. And, and, um, and it's just, it's just awesome because you've gone to the Weber, you've got the PK grill. You, I mean, you just one thing after another and, and guys are, uh, are using it because it works so well. Yeah. Thank you. So yeah, it's, well, it's awesome. been interesting, you know, kind of on our journey, um, you know, kind of the next step, I don't know if you're alluding to that and, and how we started to grow, um, it was basically just word of mouth. I mean, if I encourage can encourage anyone, you know, when starting a business or something, you know, start small and smart, smart and, and maybe take the, I call it the pork butt business approach. Yeah. We just grew it, grew it low, low and slow, you know, kind of like you cook a pork butt. And, um, you know, reinvest into new products and stuff. So we just started with the large and, well, there's a story behind that too on challenges and whatnot, but, sure. but, uh, but as we, you know, got out there, folks were like, Hey, when's the XL coming? 
when's yeah. the medium coming? I'm like, I didn't know anybody owned any medium grills. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then it just, it kind of yeah. kept perpetuating. And as we'd get enough, enough interest, we would, you know, invest the time and the money and the engineering to make the next size and things like that. So it's, that's yeah. kind of how we've grown it. And um, it's been a lot of fun meeting right. people like you and others and, and seeing what they, what they like to do. Yeah. You know, and there, there's a lot of questions. In in fact, uh, I, I've got a couple, at least one question for sure that, that I get more often than not. And that's about in the big green egg itself, the cast iron grate that, it comes with to put the charcoal yeah. in and and i've kind of gone through a revolution uh myself in thinking uh of you know trying it different ways you know um uh, in mm. fact I, I i think a couple of first videos that i put out concerning the kick ash basket you know you you uh, had contacted me and and su- made a couple of suggestions which were helpful and i i went to that and then i went back and then i'm, I'm back you know so i've kind of gone back and forth but um, and, and, and I don't know if that would play into some of the, um, um, you know, that process, maybe the, the difficulties, the struggles that came to develop that, but you know, what do you, first of all, from straight from you, what do you recommend and does it matter on the size of egg, whether or not you remove that cast iron plate, um, that holds the charcoal? Yeah, I haven't used the cast iron, the original cast iron charcoal grate since, I don't know. 2010. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I just took that thing out and, yeah. and figured out my cooking and it, and it works and things change a, a little bit, mm-hmm. but by and large you, so with the basket, you get better consistent airflow, which gives you better consistent temperature control throughout your cooks and I throw a caveat in. That is, as long as the seals on your egg are in good, proper condition. Because if you're sucking in air there, then you're going to have issues yeah. with your, your temperature control. But I've done 20-hour pork butts in my large egg at 235 degrees Fahrenheit on one load of charcoal. And that, you know, that was using a flame boss. You know, so I'm using a temperature controller and controlling it well. But I you know, filled up the basket. I, I overfill it. If I'm doing a long cook, folks, you know, say, Hey, it doesn't hold enough charcoal. Well, I'll overfill the basket. Like it's not there. It's going to cook down. Yeah. It's yeah. going to burn down into the basket, you know, so it's not a problem, but, um, you know, by and large, my the consistency is just, has been there. Was there struggles um, in developing it with that? Uh, no, I, I think that, you know, just using the basket and, and no one, I mean, the, the fundamentals of an egg are mm. when the bottom vent is open a quarter of an inch and the top vent is open a similar distance, you know, a quarter inch or whatever. But theoretically, that is all the airflow that can go through that system. And it doesn't matter what's holding your charcoal because that's all the air in and all the air out. So, you know, the physics of it are just simple. That's, that's what it is. Now, where the basket helps is you're not plugging up the little holes in the original charcoal grate in that. Right. right. So similarly, like with an XL, now we did used to, with our original products that were made from mild, mild steel, um, we knew that they flexed and, and the mild steel just, it, it experiences thermodynamic expansion and contraction a lot more than stainless steel. And um, so in 2017, we changed over to stainless steel. Now, so what we, you know, promoted originally was that with the XL, you should leave that grate in there because your the bottom of your basket would probably sag in things. And, and they did. I mean, over time, I mean, we're cooking in you know, almost the most extreme environment you can think of to have a product. Right. And um, yeah, so, I mean, I had a buddy, my buddy Craig, he had one of my original... Uh, XL baskets that was made from our original ones were thin gauge wire and everything now is, you know, really heavy duty. Um, but his XL basket, it drooped so much. It, it, it like caved down on the bottom. It was touching the bottom of his XL egg and <laughs> wow. he'd send me pictures. And I'm like, dude, let me send you a new one. Cause he promotes the heck out of us. He's like, yeah. it's working fine. Yeah. Leave me alone. <laughs> oh, man. All right, Craig. right. Thanks man. 
Yeah. That's, so, does that answer your question kind of yeah. on the, the great theory? Well, it, it does <laughs> because uh, it, cause I think where the question really comes in more often than not is if I'm going to do a low and slow, do we really want all that, you know, that good airflow, you know, it, would that help kind of choke it down, keeping that in? And, and I think you're right. I think just the, just using the, the way that those grills are made using the vents themselves is where you control, you know, that airflow and, uh, and the basket just keeps all the air clean and, and, um, you know, unrestricted, uh, from other, other, other issues. So it's, it's just awesome. Um, yeah. and, and now when I'm using a flame boss, I, w- I will say, um, I, I close that top damper down to almost nothing. Yeah. I mean, a 16, 32nd inch gap. That's it. And I let that fan, you know, control it and it, it just hums along, man. It is yeah. it's beautiful for you. It yeah, really I know. Is. yeah. 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 <laughs> flame balls. I mean, that's the, you know, the two centerpieces, um, besides the green egg itself in our, in our packages for veterans and first responders and others is, is the, the flame boss and the kick ash basket. And, and, and that's just where, you know, we mentioned the basket. I mean, that's all we've talked about so far, but it, it is, it has gotten to where there's so much more, first of all, things you've developed and then other things you have that are for sale that uh, on your website, you know, the just kick ash branded uh, products that are, are just some of the best that I have used that, are necessary really for me to be safe. Uh, your gloves, your heat resistant gloves are the gloves that I, Mm -hmm. you know, I tell everybody, if you want heat resistant gloves that are going to work, you know, order them from kick ash basket, just because they're, they're the best I've used. Uh, they just work great. So, um, but, uh, you know, from the, from the basket, you then came out with the can and yeah. I mean, yeah, you, you talk about a, a work smarter, not harder concept that that kick ash can going in the bottom is just made, uh, you know, cleanup was easier to begin with, with the basket. Mm-hmm. And now it's just like, um, yeah, I'm gonna go clean out the grill. Okay. I'm back. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's just boom. You know, it's done and I love yeah. it. I love it. But I mean, Thank what you. is that kind of the same process of thinking when you came up with this yeah and uh yeah so it's kind of i like to say you know why half ash it when you can whole ash it <laughs> and now we have the whole ash system yeah. <laughs> and so so the you know the can it, it this was so this was actually an idea from quite a few years ago when we're step still having um product made here in the u.s um and then when we went to to stainless we we needed to go off offshore and we actually landed in india you know years and years ago um we had this this idea of creating some type of can or bucket you know that would go underneath the basket and catch everything then you could just lift it out and the challenge was we just couldn't find anything um in the states that would be a a reasonable priced item Mm. and then when we had we you know got production in india and kind of expanded our options we were able to make the product and um you know now you can you know we can we've got cans for um medium large extra large um the oval xl um the classic joe and i also have one i call the 9.7 because it's the 9.7 top diameter and it fits in you know several of the other guys like the pit boss and the kong from gorilla grills which i'm a huge fan of yeah, and um, also uh, slow and sear, the the can fits in there too. So, oh, okay. Um, but yeah, so we're you know uh, trying to share love and yep. and uh, you know support some of these other these other folks. But yeah, the can's just a simple solution to um, you know be able to shake the ash right in the grill, yeah, and then just lift out the can and you're you're basically done. Right. You know. Yep. You're still you're not gonna get a hundred percent of the ash. You know, we had to leave a hole in the side of it so mm-hmm. that you could let air flow. <laughs> so, yeah, right, of course. Um, but um that's actually interesting, Chris, in that um you know, I first came out with a can and you know, whatever pictures we had out there, folks were like, Well, isn't that gonna prevent the airflow and the grill? And like, no, there's a great big hole in the side of it. And um, so they, you know, didn't didn't see that in the pictures or whatever. And then I'm like well, what if somebody was silly enough to put the thing in backwards? <laughs> yeah. 
And so, so I've actually, I've done cooks like that just to test it. And, um, you, you can actually hold temperatures. It, it's harder to get up to higher temperatures fast. Right. But right. there are the, the vent holes in the side of the ceramic. Yes. And right, then just yeah. enough airflow around the, around the grill and even running the can backwards, ash backwards. Yeah. <laughs> you, yeah. you could still maintain temperatures. So wow. it, it's just been fun to, to play with it and develop it and, yeah. and see what we can do. So, right. Yeah. That is, that is so cool. Um, now how, how have you guys been affected with, you know, with everything that's gone on with the COVID, the, this coronavirus, the economy being shut down. I mean, it's, I know a lot of yeah. folks have been heavily hit. I mean, it's, it's unfortunate, yeah. but, and, uh, but how have things been going for you guys? Well, um, pretty good. Um, you know, and we're, we're grateful and blessed every day, Chris. And, and fortunately we're in an industry where folks are grilling from home yeah. and, and they're shopping online and we had things set up. Um, you know, we have awesome stores all over the country and they, they slow down, you know, quite a bit. Um, but even a lot of the stores are hardware stores. So they, they were able to, you know, stay going through the bit, through the COVID stuff and whatnot, and they've been doing all right. But, mm-hmm. you know, a lot of our sales have been direct to consumer and, um, you know, talking to folks every day, talked to a guy from Long Island, New York yesterday. And he's like, man, I love your products. Tell me about this divider. And um, he's like, I got a big mouth. I tell everybody about this. <laughs> I, we just love talking with folks, yeah. you know, and, and seeing what's going on, where they're, where they're at in the world and, and things. And, and um, that's how we've been, you know, sustaining and, and running our business. And we've been very fortunate um, right. in this, in this crazy day and age to, to keep things rolling. Yeah. And um, so, so I, th- I think, um, you know, you've experienced too, everyone's, cooking from home right. and learning new, new ways of taking care of their family. Yeah. And, um, I, I think it's going to be a shift in, you know, the grilling business. Um, I just, I just had a post yesterday. I don't know if you had a chance to listen to it on, on my kick, bas- basket page, uh, the history of barbecue with, uh, the history guy or something like that. And it, it was awesome. He had all kinds of cool stuff going on there and he had quotes from the HPBA Hearth Patio and Barbecue Association on, you know, just how well the barbecue industry is doing. Um, and that's, it's a, it's a very fortunate place to be right in this day and age for sure. Yeah, so, yeah it is. Yeah. And, and what I got worried about, because it seemed like, you know, restaurants were shutting down and people were cooking more at home, which was, you know, could yeah. be a good thing as far as cooking at home, unfortunate for some of the restaurant workers, but uh, then, you know, the meat industry got hit and, and then I wondered, well, how is that going to affect, but you're for, really from those that I've talked to because the, and I think partly because all the competitions were shut down, um, the, you know, there, mm-hmm. I, I didn't experience the meat shortage that I thought was going to happen um, because yeah. e- usually every year during certain seasons, during certain competitions that are taking place, you know, it's hard to get certain cuts of meat and, and that really didn't mm-hmm. happen this year. So, um, and I think if the competitions would have gone on, it, it probably would have been a lot worse <laughs> with all the, yeah. with, with the meat going on. But, um, so yeah. you, you know, you've the basket, the can, you mentioned the divider a while ago. Um, now that's just for the uh-huh. large and extra large, right? Um, we do have one for the medium. Okay. And there, so we've got some different size dividers that also fit in different baskets. Mm -hmm. So for instance, my large divider fits in the large big green egg basket, also the classic Joe basket, and also the oval XL basket from Primo. So I was able to, you know, carry that design across um, three different ones. It actually fits in a W17 basket too, where it's a little short if it sits in the middle, but when you put it in like the third of a load location, it it holds a charcoal exactly where it needs to be. So, yeah. And we do have for the XL and then the XL uh, divider also fits in the big Joe basket as well. So, um, so yeah, we got some different ones and it's, you know, it's a interesting option kind of started with the XL guys that were like, Hey, I got this huge grill. I just had a divider. I could, 
use half a load of charcoal or yeah. a third of a load. And our, our divider is adjustable, so you can do just, just that. So, yeah. yeah, it's been fun. Right. I mean, yeah, and you can, I mean, not only using less charcoal, but, you know, having a two zones, basically, you know, with a direct zone oh. and then indirect, even with that extra large, which is which is awesome. The Just the capability yeah. that that created. Before, a lot of the um, accessories that have come out since um, were out there, you guys were – you know, making it possible. So, you know, which is awesome. And, and we definitely appreciate it. It is the ceramic grills probably still the biggest, uh, por- portion or is the, like the PK and the Weber and, you know, the baskets for those grills really taken off too. Yeah. They're starting to ramp up. Um, the, the, the PK has become really popular. That one's, you know, very hot on the, um, on the SCA. Right circuit which like you mentioned is, is slowed down but we get I, I did a run of those in the spring and we've been out of those baskets for about a month now and um, you know, I've got a long waiting list of guys that are eager to get them when our next shipment comes in at the end of July here yeah um, so that's been very popular and that one comes with an adjustable divider as well um, and then some guys like to get an extra divider with the PK so they can have charcoal on both ends and you know cook in the middle um, for an option Oh, okay. Um, yeah, so, so that one, that one's, you know, ramping up and whatnot. And, um, yeah. the Weber one is starting to take off as well. Um, you know, you got a, a, you know, 22 inch Weber kettle is probably the, their most popular charcoal, uh, grill. Right. And, um, you know, early on folks were like, Hey, do you have a basket for the Weber? I'm like, ah, I don't know. And then, you know, one day I was in a, you know, a local grill shop and I dropped an XL basket into a Weber 22 and, Sure enough, the darn thing fit. And I was like, Ooh, well, there's, there's a great option. However, <laughs> the, mm-hmm. the extra large basket, you know, it's all made from 304 stainless steel is almost as expensive as a kettle grill itself. <laughs> You're right. You know? Yeah. So, so uh, you know, I'm trying, I'm scratching my head trying to figure out, you know, what can I do differently for the Weber guys? And um, actually, I was flying on an airplane one day going to an egg fest down in Florida or Georgia or something. And I had this idea that, man, if I just made a ring that you would essentially use the, the Weber charcoal grate and you could um, create a basket out of the Weber charcoal grate. So we created, you know, I did up some sketches and stuff and, you know, came up with a design and, so now I have this ring, which we have, we call the ring of fire, you know, yeah. thank you, Johnny Cash. You're right. And, uh, <laughs> and um, it holds a charcoal grate. And now we have, a, you know, that, that ring of fire is, um, you know, about half the price of, of the extra large basket. And, yeah. Um, yeah. So, and then we, you know, have a, a divider with it as well. Right. Um, so that's a good option, but yeah. And, and I, I got I, I was... ring of fire. Can you believe that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because there were no no trademarks in the barbecue and grill industry wow. for Ring of Fire. Yeah, so I I snagged it up and You're right. here we go. Wow, yeah, yeah, that that's almost hard to believe, but that's awesome. Um, how long has that one been out though? Um, a little. It's been over a year okay. that the Weber Ring of Fire has been out. Um, and it, it's a special it's a special Weber cooker that person that's that uses it you know that they're, they're cooking with uh lump charcoal you know so they mm-hmm. can reuse it right you know and they're they're, they're the passionate weber guys and they're out there it, oh, but yeah. it's a niche within a niche and um so well, it's yeah, becoming it's more popular with that because more weber guys that i talk to are they're they're learning how to do low and slow cooks on these kettles and yeah. and it's amazing you know because i even i never imagined that you know they would be doing some of the low and slow cooks that they're doing and you know not only with the slow and sear which you said one of your your baskets will fit into as well but yeah. you know even without it they're just you know the way they're setting it up their their charcoal uh, and, and, you know, building their fire, they're doing these awesome, long, low and slow cooks and, uh, and just on a Weber kettle. And I think that's going, that's really seems to be catching on. Cause 
you know, the, the, the views on these YouTube guys that, uh, that I, you know, follow and are friends with that are doing this, they're just, uh, you know, they're really taken off. And I think a lot of guys are like, wow, why, why go and spend so much more money when, you know, I can do this and, and I can't help but think that, you know, you as a product, like what you're talking about to help with that lump charcoal management would, would make it even better. Yeah. Yeah. We think so. That's a, yeah. Definitely, definitely coming around, and and uh, we've got some good things going. So sure. Now, now the the slow ones here. That's a uh, so there there. I just want to clarify. Okay. Our basket fits in the slow and sear Kamado grill. Oh, so they can okay. Have their own Kamado grill, which is has some crazy flexibility and, and okay. fun going on with that thing. Gotcha. Um, and then slow and sear also has the accessory that goes in the Weber or you know other size grills that that is a it's a water reservoir that holds charcoal and just offers you this really awesome um two zone cooking option right so they yeah they've got a great product as well sure yeah. yeah okay well thanks for the clarification yeah i didn't i didn't realize yeah. the that on that product um with with kick ash basket um I, and I, I who came up was it tracy or you that came up with your slogans um, it, it was mostly me. <laughs> okay. I mean, I, okay. Mo- oh, yeah. I, but it, but it, it's, it's, it, it's kind of, it, it's kind of a product of, you know, sitting around and I, I use a lot of post-it notes Yeah. You know, right now. All right. Yeah. We're going to call this thing charcoal basket. Oh, that's boring. You know? Yeah. And, and, and then, you know, talking, we're like, well, this thing kicks, it's going to kick it, kick ash. <laughs> yeah all right, right. I'll, keep, I'll keep it a family show you're right yeah, you know, appreciate you know it. Where it originated <laughs> and then we just kind of came up with you know kick ash basket and then we got to have a tagline and right right and, you, know, you know you got to shake that ash and, and light that fire and yeah you're like well that, that's fitting that kind of that's the whole thing and yeah and then it, I, yeah. I i like you know like i said earlier we like to you know share our story and inspire people to do things too and mm-hmm. you know if you're sitting on the couch eating popcorn and watching movies, you're not exactly shaking that ash and lighting that fire. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, right, right. <laughs> inspire yeah. folks to get out there and do stuff. Well, yeah. by all means. <laughs> yeah. You know, and I, you know, I've talked to some guys that they, they've made it very clear that there were times in the past that uh, they thought, you know, man, I'd love to fire up the grill, but oh, I'm going to have to clean it out. I got to, you know, got to go through all this stuff. And then they, they get the basket and they're just like, Oh, no problem. You know, I mean, they're, they're cooking yeah. more, they're, they're using their grill more just because of the ease of everything that, that it uh, has created for them. And it's just, uh, yeah. you know, I, I can't say enough about it. And, and you guys, y'all support for what we do and, um, it, you know, has been phenomenal and such yeah. an encouragement mm-hmm. for us. So, uh, we, we really appreciate that. Um, you're welcome, Chris. We, I've been honored to, you know, when you first reached out to us to, to help out i was like heck yeah i love what you're doing you know you're helping yeah. folks get back to grilling and um you know and and helping provide for their family i mean what more value can you can you give a person than helping them cook for their family yeah. and friends or, or whatever i mean yeah. that's just that's just a beautiful thing and to be a part of that um i'm just honored yeah i so, mean yeah and you. that's just just to know yeah. the independence that they receive with that and and not just cooking but man you know the to be able to clean it up so much easier now too but no we we're we're thrilled to have you on board and like i said it's not just you know some of these products like the basket and the can and the divider you know there's so much more on your website um you know the the gloves like i said i recommend those gloves highly I always use the the charcoal gloves that you uh, and you were sending a pair of those out with just about every order. Do you still are you still doing that? The charcoal yeah. gloves. Yeah. So when folks, we like to take care of folks that, that shop direct with us. You know, because selling direct to the consumer is you know kind of the best mm-hmm. for the business. Um, so if you order direct from our website, we're going to send you a pair of charcoal gloves and. Um, you know, it's just a, a simple glove that we found. We had our name put on it, but man, they've been awesome. I keep them right on top of my bag of charcoal. Yeah. So when I go to start up the grill, I throw those on, keep my fingers clean. I can brush the ash off the side of the 
the ceramic down into the egg to kind of finish the cleaning to start. And, yep. and those have been awesome. And then you've got to keep your, your fingers warm up here in Wisconsin um, with the can koozie. And um, so we like to send those to folks too when they order direct from our website. So yeah. So that's right. pretty fun. <laughs> yeah. Now, and the, of course, the heat resistant gloves that you guys have as yeah. well. Um, and and those are, again, like I said, some of the best that I've used uh, when it comes to grabbing hot items, whether it's cast iron um, skillets, Dutch ovens, or plate setters from the egg, hot grates, what, whatever it is, when, when it's hot, those things are just working amazing. And uh, and so I'm always recommending those gloves to folks. Uh, one of my favorite things that um, scares my wife every time I start the grill is that J.J. George Grill Torch. Oh, oh. I love that thing, man. That's awesome. Uh, That's great. So. Now, now, Chris, are you, are you lighting fresh charcoal directly with the torch? Or are you... How do you like? So it, it, I do a little bit of, of both. So I'll, I'll, I will occasionally, usually though, I'll stick a starter stick in the charcoal and I'll okay. light it with the torch. Um, because yeah. you know, with a lighter, you, you kind of line it up, you move your hand and then you, you hope you didn't move the end of the lighter and, and you may take a few times yeah. with that grill torch. I mean, I yeah. just, it just throws the flame, man. It's so cool. Yeah. Um, that thing's awesome. Yeah, now, I'll share a tip, tip with your listeners, if you don't mind. Yeah. Something I learned is that uh, it seems that fresh charcoal, in my experience, no matter what brand, and I've tried all kinds. Sure. Um, one of my favorites is Rockwood. I love you know, Fogo and Jealous Devil and stuff too. But it, 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 in my experience, no matter what kind it is, if I put a torch to it directly, it's going to spark yeah. quite a bit. Yeah. And um, so what I've learned is when I clean out the charcoal, I shake the ash out of the leftover lump. I save three, four, five pieces, and I put that on top of the new lump, and okay. then I light the old charcoal, and it does not spark nearly as bad as, or almost it, hardly at all, right? Compared to brand new charcoal, and I, I don't know if that's because of moisture in the brand new charcoal or because of little bits of fine charcoal dust or what the reason is, but that's been my experience and it's been, it's a lot safer if you do right. that. But, no, that's, a, that's yeah. a great tip. Cause I've had a few guys that have told me that, you know, they, they had a long sleeve shirt on and, and, uh, yeah, that's no longer a long sleeve shirt. So <laughs> and they just like little embers, you know, will pop up and they you know burn holes through their sleeves and yeah. uh, that, that has happened. And, um, and so, um, you know, so they've, they've tried to make some adjustments. A couple of them have bore holes, um, you know, what they're using two fingers kind of bore a little hole and that's kind of where they aim that flame. And that seems to tamp it down some yeah. as well, but holding it steady that when you can't see, it can be a problem. And so, uh, yeah. but no, I appreciate that. That's uh, that I'm definitely will, uh, will give that a go because that is one reason why I went to go ahead and use some of the starter sticks because, yeah. um, some of that popping and that those sparks that come off, uh, that charcoal is, it, it can be pretty intimidating when you can't see where they're going and, and, uh, oh. what's happening. So yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely appreciate <laughs> that. <laughs> that. Those two. Yeah, so, uh, now do you, uh, of course right now I know everything is up in the air as far as, you know, a lot of the egg fests have been canceled. A lot of cooking competitions are all canceled. Yeah. Um, you know, as you have any plans though, as far as, um, you know, some that you're aware of, I think they moved Memphis in May. I don't know if you ever attend Memphis in May, uh, mm. but, uh, they're moving it to October last I heard, if it hasn't been canceled altogether. Oh, um, wow. but, uh, you know, they, I know yeah, they've moved some things around. Memphis, Memphis in May is has typically been the same time as the Georgia Mountain Egg Fest, which is one of our absolutely favorite egg fests down in uh, the North Georgia Mountains. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, that you know, our, all of our favorite events have been been canceled this year. Now I have had a couple requests. Um, the Ohio Egg Fest is supposed to be going on. I think that that's in August. Okay. Um, not sure how that's going to pan out for us if we can get down there or not. Um, but would love to, I've heard that that's really come up as a nice size event yeah. and things. Um, and then the other one that I, I just heard of recently is, um, 
Indianapolis, uh, Sullivan Hardware has an egg fest. I think beginning of August as well too. And um, it, man, if you if you guys have a chance to get to that one, um, they have a wonderful hardware store. In the back of the hardware store um, is this phenomenal garden center, and uh, they turn the whole thing into this amazing walk through egg fest. <laughs> and last year was the first time they had it back there, and it's treed and there's sidewalks and uh, just a gorgeous setup compared wow. to being in you know your standard um, asphalt yeah. parking lot, you know, at 90 degrees and 90% humidity. Right. I'll pack. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. Right. I hear you. Man. Well, well yeah. one, one thing I did want to share with, with our listeners, uh, and again, it's, it's just a, it, it goes to show what kind of company you guys are not only helping us out, but we had a guy, we were actually about to, he was on the list to deliver a package to, uh, and I and and you actually I don't think we're aware of this. He he has passed away uh, under while uh, mm-hmm. while in surgery, but he was down in Texas, Quinto Sanchez, and he uh, had a grill that he was working with, uh, just a metal grill. And and I was talking to you about a basket uh, for him to help him with his charcoal management. He was totally blind. And, uh, and you, we got you some, some dimensions and you worked with uh, one of the baskets you had, I think you had to cut the handles off of it, but I mean, mm-hmm. you went through and, and did some, you know, some, uh, uh, you know, uh, adjustments and made it fit and it worked so well. And that guy was so happy. Um, oh. you know, and, and it, it just made his life so much easier when he was out there grilling for, for him and his mom. And, um, mm. you know, and, and unfortunately, like I said, you know, he, he's passed on, but, you know, I, I just, you know, knowing, you know, that you guys were just like, well, you know, let's, let's make it work. Let's find something that can help him. Um, I appreciate it. And I, I just want folks to know that, you know, that's, that's the kind of company, you know, the, the folks behind the company, you know, that, you know, we're talking with right now. And, um, you guys are just, have been awesome and, uh, you know, let alone the awesome products, you guys, you guys make it even better. Thanks, Chris. I mean, that give me some serious chills here, dude. <laughs> that's, that's, that's awesome. I, you know, I got to pinch myself daily that we get to get to do this as a business and, and be able to take care of my family and, and, and be able to, you know, share this, the love of cooking, love of grilling with so many people. And, yeah. and, um, you know, when times are tough and you got knockoffs coming on Amazon from China and stuff like that, and you got challenges with shipping and, you know, all this other stuff or, or somebody's old basket burns out and you're like, Oh no. And you know, you, you just take care of them. You take care of people, you talk to people. And, and when I look back at it in it, and, and, um, you know, Trace and I talk, talk about it. When we, when we think of the, the lives we've touched through this little basket, um, you know, it's not just the single person, but you know, the ripple effect of that person then being able to grill for their friends and family and, make their life easier and, and yeah. thousands and thousands. And, and I don't know, maybe we're to a million people that we've affected with this silly basket, but yeah, um, right. man, it sure is. It sure is an honor and, and a blessing to be able to do this. Sure. And um, I love, I love helping you guys. So yeah. thank you so much. Yeah. Well, well, thank you. And um, you know, is, is anything coming down the line that we can be waiting for that? I know, I know um, things have been kind of crazy. <laughs> yeah, put you on the spot. Times are crazy, <laughs> but I mean, we want to keep, we want to keep growing the business. Yeah. Um, you know, I mentioned the pork butt business plan, um, you know, to try to keep it low and slow and, right. and smart yeah. and, um, yeah. and, and whatnot. So we have invested a little bit more in marketing um, to try to reach more people. And it's, I'm like, man, I don't, I don't know how we can do more. Um, and whatnot, but we've we've gotten some help with marketing now, and been able to put out some some great things on social, and you know get some Google help and whatnot. So yeah, so that's that's been a lot of fun. Um, I'm working on maybe some cast iron type stuff in the future. Okay. Um, that would you know be branded, um, but maybe some unique things that we would have coming down the pipe. And then um, you know my kind of my entrepreneur inventor head is still on, and and actually yeah. I've got a a mountain bike um, 
cleaning type accessory that I just filed for provisional patent on. And so different industry, but mountain right. bikers like to grill. That's right. And that's beer. right. Yeah. And I, and I love hearing about your mountain biking adventures. So, yeah. That's, so we have you know, awesome. something in that, that side coming as well. Yeah. Sweet. Um, but yeah, we're just trying to keep it real and be able yeah. to, you know, spend time with the family and get out biking. You know, I yeah. know you appreciate that we get out and ride and enjoy the woods and right. like to hug a tree now and then, yeah. but I, I don't like to wipe out too much anymore. <laughs> yeah. I hear that. Yeah. I've, I've did my share of that for sure. Yeah. yeah. But, <laughs> that's awesome. but that, I mean, that's just, you know, you, you're, you're following your passions, man. And that's, uh, and, and look at, look at what's happening because, you know, not only, you know, providing for a family, you know, and, and doing this together with your family, but you, you are touching a lot of lives, even with, like you said, a silly basket, but man, it is, it, it has made the life of <laughs> blind and visually impaired folks easier. And, and I know a lot of, a lot of, a lot of you sighted folks too, I know. <laughs> yeah. you know, they're, they're, they're taking advantage of it. Don't let them. Yeah, that's right. So, uh, but anyway, well, man, I appreciate you. I appreciate you coming on and uh, being with us and and talking about the company and and uh, just. Uh, I hope folks will will check it out. The website kickashbasket.com, and there's there's a ton of stuff, just great stuff that's on there. I love your shirts. You know, um, love love everything. Uh, you know that you guys have. It's just. Uh, you know, shake that ash and light that fire. You know, that's, uh, I got to be real careful when I say it though. I got to tell you, being a preacher, yeah, folks are always asking me, what, it's what did you show. say? That's right. <laughs> so that's right. Awesome, man. Well, any last words, thoughts that you want to shout yeah, out? Yeah, I would, I would just invite your listeners to, uh, to reach out if, um, you've got ideas you want to bounce off or something, or just say, Hey, how'd you do this? Or, whatever, I, I encourage folks to, you know, try something, you know, start small, start smart, just get a couple. I didn't even tell you about the first hundred baskets I got that didn't even fit. Oh, no, no. But uh, that's another challenge. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so, but you live and learn and you, you yeah. move along. And, and um, yeah, so yeah. reach out. You can reach me through the website or, or email me directly at chad at kickashbasket.com. And um, I'm – pretty much an open book. So, right. Um, cool. I'll, I'll get back to you. I promise. Yeah. yeah. Easy guy to talk to man. I, that's what I appreciate. I mean, just so down to earth and, uh, you know, that's, uh, that's just awesome. And, uh, I look forward to being able to cook with you again. It's been a few years since we've been able to get together and cook, but, uh, definitely want to do that again. And, uh, we'll catch you at an egg fest or maybe you can come, you know, make it to Missouri again and, uh, yeah, get together and do some cook. So awesome. Love it. All right, man. Well, thanks again, folks. We appreciate you checking out Blind Grilling Experience. We're on all the major podcast formats, and so we uh, appreciate those who subscribe. Check us out on YouTube at Blind Grilling. Uh, there, youtube.com slash blind grilling, our Facebook page at facebook.com slash blind grilling. And, of course, check out Kick Ash Basket at kickashbasket.com. And always remember, if you're looking, you ain't cooking.